you've done some great reporting on Stanford, Berkeley, Harvard, uh, the way they're jumping into this race, the companies that will be major players, and the way it's going to change all of our lives. What should our viewers understand? One of the things that, that's going to happen is that universities have stepped up to the plate where the Centers for Disease Control and others have failed, and they're starting to use their academic labs to be testing labs. And I think it's somewhat of a shift from the ivory tower to being engaged in public health, maybe in the environment. Also, what you're seeing is that great researchers, including those at Berkeley and at the Broad Institute, who have come up with this gene editing technology called CRISPR, that's what bacteria have been doing for three billion years to fight off viruses. So how can we learn from that in order to detect the virus right away and then chop up the virus eventually? So you're going to see some new cutting edge technologies that will make this a biotech generation, just like uh, your generation and mine and John Fort's and Morgan's was sort of a digital tech generation. Interesting. Does that make you optimistic in the near term? Or is this, as you say, more of a generational play, something that's going to come to fruition over the, the course of years, not months? In the next six months, we'll be able to have very good, fast, 15-minute detection tests using CRISPR-type technology to say, is this RNA from this virus present? I think that within a year, you'll be able to use it to help destroy that virus if it's in the system. And I think within a couple of years, but this becomes an ethical issue, we could edit the human genome to take out receptors that would make us susceptible to viruses. That sounds like science fiction, but just a year and a half ago, the Chinese scientist, Zhang Ki He, did that by cutting out in the embryo receptors for HIV, the virus that causes AIDS and had CRISPR babies that had been edited. That's going to be much more dangerous. That certainly, even though it's happened already on this planet, uh, two or three down, years down the road before we figure out if we're going to allow that sort of thing. Walter, you are such an ace on history. So uh, I got to ask for perspective on this coronavirus. Um, we're used to thinking about how wars and natural disasters change uh, the course of history, who rises, who falls, how, how people plan. But, Walter, do you have any sense of how this virus might either shift the balance of power, shift economies, shift the way people around the world think? Yeah, well, you're going to see a lot of shifts that we're seeing right now, including as you watch this show, which is that a lot more is going to be done remotely. And after three or four uh, board of directors meetings that are done by Zoom or other remote devices, you'll see companies trying to figure out, well, to what extent do we need in-person meetings? We've talked for 10 years about MOOCs, the massive online courses, and how that's going to transform education. It didn't happen. Now, by necessity, it's happening. So we're going to see things like that. But mainly, I think we'll see a period of the next 20 years in which biotechnology and specifically the use of RNA-guided enzymes, things that can chop up the genetic code of ourselves or, for that matter, of viruses, that will be the new cutting edge of business. Yeah, and that is just why I find this thesis so fascinating. I really love it, Walter, this idea of this third great innovation revolution of modern times that the atom brought in this era of physics, that the bit brought in this era of a digital revolution, and now this life science revolution that's basically being driven by biotech. What are the societal impacts of, of that as well, especially at a time where certainly there is so much focus on things like kids learning how to code and digital transformation of businesses right now? What does the biotech era look like? Well, that's a great question, Morgan, because I think all of us are trying to make sure our kids know Python and C++ and know how to code. But the people who learn how to code digitally are soon going to be surpassed by those who know the code of life, who can do it with the ATCG, which are the letters of the genetic code of our DNA. Also, as you look at companies, there are a couple of companies that have already been founded that are using uh, CRISPR technology for detection and also eventually for therapies or for treatments. 
Uh, you see Mammoth uh, uh, Biosciences, which came out of Jennifer Doudna's Berkeley group that did CRISPR. You also see Sherlock, which is in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which came out of Fong Zhang, MIT, The Broad, and Harvard, which did, uh, which were also co-pioneers of this gene editing revolution. So I think whether it's companies or entrepreneurs or startups or kids in uh, middle school, they're going to be starting to figure out how am I going to deal with the code of life, the genetic code, rather than just the digital and binary codes that we've been uh, yeah. driving entrepreneurship for the past 20, 30 years.